Good morning, Bucknutters. It is Thursday, pretty sure, March 14th, 2024. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. Going to be joined by Steve Wolfong here in a little bit. Big news with Ohio State's running back coach, Tony Alford, going from Ohio State to Michigan, and we will get into it. But first, a word from our sponsors. My guys, you ever lift a little too hard or just to forget? To apply your daily deodorant and get hit by a truckload of BO from all directions? Does that three-in-one shampoo leave you needing a second shower just a few hours after the first? From the founders of Lumi, Mando Whole Body Deodorant is helping men conquer their odor in a new way. Formulated with mandelic acid, Mando has long-lasting 72-hour odor control that actually stops odor before it starts. Best part is you can put Mando anywhere. Pits, packages, feet, skin folds, back, knees, everywhere. To top it off, Mando's cologne quality scents were created with men in mind. Pro tip, try their best-selling scent, bourbon leather. It's a game changer. And let me tell you something, it smells great, and there's no more manly statement than bourbon leather. And once you experience fresher underarms, a fresher package, and fresher feet, you'll never go back. Mando's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body wash or deodorant wipes, and free shipping. Luckily, we have a discount code to help you get hooked on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code. That equates to 40% off your starter pack. Use code BUCKNUTS at shop. Mando.com. S H O P M A N D O.com. Use the code Bucknuts. It's time to smell better naked. Your partner will thank you. Steve can't actually smell me right now, but ladies and gentlemen, Steve Wiltfong is here to infotain you as uh, things are hot and heavy now. I will tell you this we all know now if you're watching this show that. Running, back, running backs coach Tony Alford has flipped from Ohio State to Michigan. Had you been a Bucknuts premium subscriber last night, you could have read the VIP intel from Dave Biddle on this, which is the exact inside information you should have on this. I can't give that to you for free. You've got to go pay for it. Luckily for you, we have a deal going right now at Bucknuts. If you join, you get 50% off for the year. It is a tremendous, tremendous deal. 50% off, and you would know the inside information. This is a podcast out on YouTube. You can pause this. If you don't know the VIP intel and you're not a premium subscriber, you could be reading it in about a minute. Go click on there, sign on to Bucknuts, read Dave Biddle's VIP intel, and come back, and you should be good to go. All right, Steve, here's what I'd like you to do. You have known Tony Alford longer than the average uh, recruiting scribe. You guys go back a while. Could you bring us back to when you first kind of got affiliated with, with Tony and then uh, your impressions of his maneuver, your general thoughts on the whole deal? And when we originally planned to have me on the show, we were going to talk about Ohio State crystal ball pick. So this is we still uh, will. This is new information here. But you know, Coach Alford was a guy that I got to know when he was an assistant coach at Notre Dame. Uh, um, so that was a long time ago. Time flies. I don't even remember when that was. But you know, over the course of his career, he's had some fantastic recruiting wins. He's coached some fantastic running backs that went on to uh, play at a high level, and you know was one of the highest paid guys in the profession at the position for a reason and and uh, thought he did a great job for Ohio State. And Michigan's going to hope he does the same for them. It is kind of interesting. He uh, He's had some kind of well-publicized – I mean, the, the one thing that's going to come up a lot is the B. John Robinson uh, recruitment where apparently Ohio State had him in the bag and it didn't work out because his parents didn't want to come so far or something like that. But – um and he has only had one of his guys that he's actually recruited get drafted. Now, it's ironic to me that he's leaving when I can't remember Ohio State's running back room ever looking this deep and strong. Um, 
and I guess if the job he wanted was at Michigan, but I would think he could have his his pick of jobs after this year when everyone saw how productive they were. On the recruiting front, do you think this will help or hurt Ohio State? Well, I think that Ohio State's brand and and uh, what they've been able to accomplish historically always puts the Buckeyes in the equation to recruit the top players in the country. And then I think the culture that the program has had under Urban Meyer, then Ryan Day, it's a place that players are very comfortable and they want to play in and so that they gravitate towards it. So I think that, you know, Coach Alfred added to that, but I would think that whoever replaces him is someone that's going to be able to, you know, it's a great place to recruit, man. I, 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 there's no other way to say it, right? And so uh, I looked at some of the names that Dave Biddle posted in, on his VIP update. I don't want to say them on, on the air here, but those would all be super exciting names on the recruiting trail. Their household names, the magnitude, what they've done for the Ohio State program in the past, those would be major addition or those would be guys that I think would hit the ground running from a recruiting standpoint if they want to devote the time to recruiting that's really what it comes down to uh do you want to pour into building authentic relationships with prospects do you want to pour into the evaluation process and being able to figure out is this young man a a fit from a talent standpoint is he a fit from a culture standpoint is he a fit from an intangible standpoint um so those are are th those are you have to be able to dedicate yourself to recruiting. That's it's having a motor. Do you have the motor for recruiting or not? You know, because you're going to obviously already be in the building, attending all the coaching meetings and watching all the film and pouring in all of that uh, recruiting. Are you a go getter or not? Is it part of your DNA or not? I thought that Tony Alfred enjoyed recruiting. I thought he enjoyed building great relationships. I thought, you know, one of his best recruiting wins at Ohio State was certainly Travion Henderson. You know, when, sure. when I remember posting on the Bucknuts board that Ohio State led for him and he wasn't even a name that y'all were talking about at the time. And then yep. it's like, holy shit, this guy's a really good football player, you know. And uh, I think when healthy, he has a chance to be the best back in college football. Ohio State's had a lot of injuries in their running back room over the last couple of years. And I think that any time someone was asked to step up and contribute, that they were ready to play. And sure. so I thought that, you know, Tony Alford did a good job in that regard. But Ryan Day's the engine. The head coach is the engine. And, and it's his program. And, and everything that we've seen from, from Coach Day since he's been at Ohio State is this is a program that's going to be in contention for championships. This is a program that's going to have a good offense. So I'm fully confident that whoever Ohio State brings in, the train's going to keep on running. A few of the names – um, have gotten out and have become relatively public knowledge and make some sense and also kind of to dovetail with uh, what Steve said there. One is Eddie George, who they've mentioned, who's a the head coach at Tennessee State, I believe. I get confused if it's Tech or State. I messed that up. But he's a head coach at a, at a program, and uh, at least on initial uh, flyby, he wasn't interested – um, there's been some other popular names out there. Scotty Graham's name has come up. Both guys are alumni. What's interesting, and I think what you're saying is, you know, when guys have been pro football players, not necessarily the grinders of the world to come up that way. Sometimes people question how dedicated they will be to doing like the little things and the elbow grease stuff. But I think one thing Ohio State has going for them now, if you look at their staff, especially with promoting uh, Laurinaitis is, these guys are here by choice. Um, Brian Hartline and, and Jim Laurinaitis are financially independent dudes who kicked butt in the NFL. They didn't have to do this. So they wouldn't just come in here and half-ass it. Uh, Hartline and Laurinaitis, for anyone who's ever known them in their life, weren't known for half-assing things. So I do like the idea of bringing in um, alumni who know the tradition if, like you said, they're willing to bust it on the trail. Right. Tim Walton. But again, all tremendous. God bless. I should do another show just to apologize for that because uh, Tim has been so great this offseason. Do you have a particular vibe on who they will go after? Um, they don't have any commitments in the class of 2025 right now. So I guess they're not really in danger of anyone immediately flipping out. 
And I, I, I always think, you know, it's always funny. I love that this is the initial reaction, or maybe it's just in our little niche world, but people are always like, how does that impact recruiting? And as someone that sure. covers recruit, recruiting, I love that that's the uh, first thought that people have, but with the transfer portal and with the Ohio State's brand, look like just because you're not in the lead pack for a running back right now, doesn't mean that you won't land an elite back by the end of the cycle. And I also think that Ohio State is ramping things up off field that is also making them even more competitive uh, on the recruiting trail as well. Uh, look, this is obviously a position that's going to pay well. When you look at the landscape of who pays their running back coaches the best, Ohio State is, is certainly in the top one or two percent uh, on, on coach pay. So uh, they'll be able to make a competitive offer. They'll be able to go poach somebody if they want to go poach somebody. Uh, I think they can cast a wide net. Um, head head coach at a lower level, maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. you know. So we'll see what they choose to do. But I'm certain that the phone was ringing and uh, to, to come to a place like Ohio State where you're competing for championships, being part of a great coaching staff and inside a great community is very attractive. One of the major concerns people have when a coach leaves, obviously, is transfers. Um, everyone has their guys. We've been assured that uh, none of the players on the roster currently intend to transfer. None of the running backs intend to transfer because of this. Um, I don't even think he was the lead recruiter, for example, on Quinchon Judkins. Um, and he is with Trey and Trey's his last year. And you got James Peoples in there. Peoples has made no mention of boogieing. Let's talk about, while we're on it, Ohio State targets in this class. Um, because it's going to be interesting now to see who they go after. Uh, that can change um, for, you know, depending on what coach you get in there. I right. do think there's some, hold on a sec, there's some impetus on trying to get the job filled right away. I will say this is kind of a weird time to, to change coaches. The cycle hasn't necessarily closed, but um, it's not ideal. Kind of reminds me of when they uh, let go of Thad Mono a while back and they were a little bit behind in the basketball coaching cycle. But I don't think they're going to rush into this. You've got two guys on the staff and Ryan Day and Chip Kelly who could easily coach running backs for a month if need be. There's nothing that needs to be forced in there, especially with the schedule of, um, you know, where they are spring practice wise and coming back. They're all on break right now. Um, we shall see. Larry, here's, here's, here's what I would just, I, I hope. Will you guys, will you Michigan fans be here? Uh, when the going gets tough, because I have a feeling you will not. Kyle Davis, not a fan of the show. I am tough to listen to. Why is that, Kyle? A Michigan fan. All right. Um, what do you think of the class of 2025? Like I said, guys, they're going after. Um, Jordan Davison, got a couple guys in state as well. Who do you think they'll go after now? You think anything will change? Well, it could potentially change based on who they hire and then what their cup of tea is, you know, but obviously Ohio State was near the top of the list for quite a few guys. Jordan Davison was one that Tony Alford coveted uh, and, and, and talking to sources. There were some that believed that Ohio State was maybe the team to beat Byron Louis out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He's one that I thought Ohio State has led for at times. And then in-state Marquise Davis uh, from Cleveland kind of emerged as Ohio State's top guy at the position from in-state. And you figure with that, Ohio State would be tough to beat there, but certainly get another coach in. They're going to rewatch film and evaluate and, and, and maybe rework the board a little bit. Uh, oftentimes, it'd probably be pretty close, but you never know with the, with a new coach who they might fall in love with. There's so many really good skill players out there. Um, it's really the point of attack recruiting, in, in my opinion, that separates the the ultimate championship contenders you know certainly there's guys like jeremiah smith out there that are are very special but there's a lot of capable running backs out there uh, that can make a difference so it'll be interesting to see what new coach comes in and, and if that reshapes the board but again ohio state's going to be able to keep a lot of these guys warm in the meantime just because of the season that they're expected to have 
the season, you know, just the the track record of, of playing in big games and being right there year in and year out. And then the NFL draft, I think that um, Ohio State's going to be able to keep a lot of these guys warm. And Ohio State's off-field recruiting staff does a terrific job right now of, of building relationships with kids when the coaches are busy and being a huge part of, of what they're doing on the trail. Yeah, Marquise Davis, we talked about at length. Uh, Bill and Mark are big fans. Uh, I am too. Boy, he really threw up some stats. And you want to talk about speed, man. <laughs> zero to 60. Very impressive. All right. Speaking of going zero to 60, Steve, this is a Pat Murphy endorsed product, Joy Mode. And I think I speak for most men when I say we want to have better sex. And for the sake of our partner, we may need to have better sex. The issue is... Over-the-counter pills contain unregulated chemicals, suggest unsafe doses, and include the risk of several other health problems. That's why we've partnered with our friends over at Joy Mode. Whether you're looking to spice up your intimate moments, Steve, or increase your confidence in the bedroom, Joy Mode makes all natural and science-backed supplements dedicated to helping men perform better across their core functions, their trademark product, the Sexual Performance Booster is every man's solution for increased blood flow, firmness, stamina, and performance. It's like a pre-workout, but for sex. Redefine your intimacy and go to usejoymode.com for 20% off with code BUCKNUTS. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code BUCKNUTS at usejoymode.com. Ingredients with integrity, joy mode. More integrity... Your crystal ball picks. I looked before the show started. You currently have four crystal balls rolled towards Columbus in reverse chronological order. Safety, Fahim Delane, a defensive uh, wonderkind, London Merritt. And then, is it Jaime French or Jamie French and Vernell Brown the third? I will say there's a Dawson Merritt who also is out there that you crystal balled. And I freaked out. I'm like, he, we're not in his top 10. How are we not in his top 10? Then I realized I confused London and Dawson and I was much better off. Bring us up to speed. Um, do you still believe in all those four guys? You've rolled crystal balls uh, recently for two Florida types. Take the, take the uh, mic here and, and inform the people. Yeah, I, I feel good about all four of those still. London Merritt is one where he is visiting again this spring. From the first time he visited Ohio State for a game day experience, he fell in love with the Buckeyes, talking to sources around that recruitment. Ohio State continues to lead for London Merritt. You turn on his film, you see him play defensive end, you see him play outside linebacker, you see him play defensive tackle, you see him play some tight end, just a high-motored physical football player uh, that plays through contact and, and plays with a motor. I like where Ohio State stands there. The two new picks, Jamie French and Vernell Brown, uh, South Florida Express kids. Ohio State's done a great job recruiting that organization uh, what Brian Hartline's done at the wide receiver position, I think, speaks to both of those guys. Those are high uh, priority uh, recruits. They're different kind of players. Uh, Vernell Brown is that slot guy, that dynamic uh, player that can take the top off. And, and Jamie French is that physical, uh, quick receiver that you can play uh, with, with just two receivers on the field, but but certainly a very talented guy, smooth, 50-50 uh, 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 top-notch pass catcher. I think Ohio State's uh, the one to beat for both of them. And then Fahim Delani, uh, Ohio mm. State has been the one to beat for months in that recruitment, but certainly a lot of competition. Uh, Oregon, Texas being a couple of the other programs. Maryland's gotten them to campus a couple times. Local kid, but what Ohio State's done there in that recruitment, I think that they're the team to beat as we head into the spring. So Ohio State, they have the nation's number one ranked recruiting class pound for pound right now. They're in the mix for a lot of guys. They have a chance to finish number one overall. Uh, to finish number one overall, you typically have to have the quarterback uh, ranked high enough to do that. This cycle, Ohio State does with Tavian and St. Clair, mm -hmm. top two corners in the country already in the fold as well. So this class is humming. One of the best offensive linemen in the country committed as well uh, from in-state there and Carter Lowe. So 
I like the foundation of this class, and, and there's a lot of big-time guys out there that Ohio State's in the mix for, and those are four on the crystal ball that I currently like Ohio State for. Tavian St. Clair has really moved up. Um, it's pretty much – I think it's pretty explainable in that he does not come from a powerhouse high school. He's kind of a lesser-known guy. But, man, when I see him now, it's like he's uh, – it's hard to explain, but he's kind of got that look to me. He, he's he's growing in, in like the way you'd want to see him grow. And if you're looking for kind of prototype quarterbacks, he really has a chance to be that guy. Um, your thoughts on St. Clair? Were you surprised at his rise? And, and, and how do you kind of feel about it? Well, he had a really good camp season the year before his um, junior year, then had a, had a really good junior season. He's someone that was also a really good baseball player, played for the Indiana Bulls, one of the top organizations in the Midwest. He is no longer doing that. So channeling more time and energy into football, and as his physical development has come along, uh, his his trajectory has, has gone up as a prospect. It has not been surprising. Then also I like the intangibles. I think he's got the right DNA. He's a leader. He's very competitive. And uh, they've had a lot of success over there at Bellafontaine with him under center. Yeah, and uh, I think people, a lot of people thought he would eventually transfer, and he hasn't done that. And I'm actually kind of impressed with that. Once, uh, I don't think one season of high school at, for example, I think there was a lot of thought he might transfer to maybe like a Springfield or a private school. I don't think one year is going to make a major difference there because, in fact, he's grown up in Bell Fountain. He's playing with all his boys. Um, they're going to make a good playoff run this year. Yeah, a decent one this year. So um, very much looking forward to that. All right, this guy gets asked about constantly. Northmont, Clayton, Dayton area native Cedric Works. Um, he's one of those guys who will probably have to camp to get an offer. Do you think he'll go to camp, and do you think he ultimately gets an offer? I think Ohio State's high on him. I think that, they're, that this is a guy that they're very intrigued with. I've heard good things about him behind the scenes. Uh, I think that Ohio State's a place where they can generally get someone to camp if they want to get them there. Um, I, I would, I, I, I like the way that this is trending ultimately for him, uh, long term as being part of Ohio State's class based on conversations that I had, you know, a couple months ago. And I've always mentioned this. He was on my younger son's eighth grade hoops team, and he was a bull in a china shop. Man, good lord. I don't know if I've ever seen a kid at an eighth grade. It was just that strong um, and it's worked out. He's also, he's really thinned out, played center on their basketball team. Got some real bounce to him. I would like to see them invest eventually. He's not going to, I don't think he's going to rise up the ranks to be like your normal Ohio state guy, but if an in-state guy should get an extra, um, extra shot. And certainly there's other guys out there, right? JV and Campbell, Damian Shanklin. Those are guys that got recent offers. Um, I see that name on there. What about Bo Jackson? So new running backs coach, right? So we'll have to see who who they, they favor and flavor uh, at that point. But I got the sense that Marquise was kind of the top in-state back for Ohio State, um, and, and they were well positioned for him. Obviously, they're recruiting Bo, Bo as well, so we'll see what happens. Um, obviously, there's, we'll finish with this. There's been a lot of chatter here from your Michigan fans. You'd be surprised. We get a lot of Michigan fans in here. Um, well, the diehards keep up with each other's rivals. That's the beauty yeah, of it's, year, right? They weren't here as much last year and the year before, and the year before that, I'll just say that. Um, so Ohio State fans aren't flocking around Sam Webb's I, show. I don't think they're on the uh, – many calling in to the uh, Sam Webb show. But I could be wrong. I don't, I don't – I'm not a fan. I, I mean, I'm not – I don't dislike the dude. I just don't listen to his show. Um, what – let's see here. Yeah, Jordan Davison, modern day. Do you uh, – so let's talk about Chris Henry for a little bit now that I brought up modern day. That just came to my head. What do you think about Chris Henry? Do you think that hurts, helps? Um, obviously, uh, Chris, you know, committed to Ohio State. You can make an argument he's the best receiver in his class. Um, moved from the Cincinnati area out to uh, Cali, going to go to modern day. Now, that could either mean he's leaving or we have uh, implanted a in-house recruiter 
in uh, at modern day? Which do you think is more likely? Well, listening to Adam Jones on the Pat McAfee show, you know, he talked about Chris accomplishing all he could accomplish in the Midwest and going out there and getting better competition. And so I think from a football standpoint, uh, it's, it was an exciting opportunity for him to go out there and play in that conference and, and, and measure, measure himself as he continues to prepare himself for the next level. Um, certainly from a recruiting standpoint, you always feel better when he's inside your own borders than when he's way out there. But we've seen Ohio State have great success recruiting California nationally. Certainly they're making business decisions with Chris, and so that was another reason why he chose Ohio State. Oh, it's the most sure thing at the receiver position in college football right now. If you are a starter and a high-end player at Ohio State at the position, you're going to hear your name called early in the NFL draft. And so until someone proves that they're able to have similar success, uh, I think that it bodes well for Ohio State in this recruitment for the way that they are wired and the way that they're making decisions within that realm. But certainly, again, He's way out there and it's a highly populated recruiting area and he's going to take some visits and, you know, Ohio State, they've navigated through that with Jeremiah Smith from South Florida and, and, and others. And oftentimes they keep their man, sometimes they don't. Um, but what we do know is that Ohio State, when they have to pivot, they're able to at a high level. All right. This is actually going to be your last question. I have uh, postulated, if that's a word, or posited, it sounds close that with Alabama losing Nick Saban and look, they could build themselves back up, but Saban was Alabama when it came to recruiting um, the Caleb Downs recruitment being an example there. And I also think that there were a certain type of guy that probably was only considering Ohio state, Georgia, or Alabama. Those were the three. If I saw you had offers from all three that I got really geeked about. Now you take Alabama out of the mix, and I'm sure another team will slide in there, but it does seem like Georgia and Ohio State will have the advantage now. Who do you think will be the third team to slide in there? Do you think another team can slide in there like Alabama did? Do you think it will be Alabama back in there? Some people think it will be Oregon, or do you think uh, Georgia and Ohio State will kind of separate from the pack? Well, obviously Ohio State and Georgia – you know, year in and year out, they recruit some of the best pound for pound recruiting classes in the country. When you look at my favorite metric, average ranking per commit, those right. two schools are always at the top or near the top. Alabama was obviously always in there. I think that this new staff has no plans of slowing down. They they hosted some some big visitors in the last week. We'll see who else jumps in the fold. I mean, LSU is in position to sign a special class this year. You now they're number two, or excuse me, they're number three in average ranking per commit right now. Number two overall, they're in on some uh, high-profile recruits. Oregon, to your point, they're someone that is in the middle of all these blue chip battles. Geographically, it is not as easy for them to get prospects from the southeast out to Eugene like it is for Ohio State through Atlanta to Columbus. It's just such an easier process for an elite player from SEC country to get up to Ohio State. But Oregon, they're on everybody's short list. And, and Miami's another program that's on everybody's short list that if they start having some success on the field, I think that – the, their recruiting, which they've already recruited top five classes under Mario Cristobal, could really ramp up if they continue to take steps forward uh, on the football field and compete for championships. But, you know, I like Florida State and the way that they've recruited. And, and, and so there's so many teams where there's a lot of, lot of reasons to be excited about them. But clearly, I think Georgia and, and Ohio State are the two programs where you would handicap their odds with a blue chipper, maybe a little bit better than everybody else's, but LSU, Miami, Oregon, uh, those, those are programs that are, are definitely uh, recruiting at a high level that I think are ones that you can put on the short list and say, Hey, these are, these are programs that have a chance to finish with the number one class, particularly if they start or for Oregon, if they continue to play at the level that they're playing at, uh, and then doing that in the Big Ten. Texas is another. I can't believe I forgot yep. Texas. You know, they've had three top five classes under Steve Sarkeesian. So certainly they're they're in that equation. And we've seen Texas A&M finish number one. And they're going to rally and invest 
uh, in their new football coach down there. There's just a certain type of guy that I'm talking about that almost like they're the professional children who just know uh, where to go and, and where to maximize their future. I do find it interesting now that we talk about this, that Ohio State lost an Ohio recruit to Michigan last year, and it was a running back who shunned Tony Alford and went to Michigan, and now he'll be coaching him there. So it's crazy how it works out in recruiting. It's uh, – a wild weave of relationships. We do appreciate Steve stopping by. It has been a, a wild few days. Remember, if you are not a premium subscriber, now is the time to do it. If you haven't read Dave Biddle's VIP Intel on the situation, you are missing out. We appreciate Steve stopping by. Have a good one, Bucknutters. Take care, y'all. See you on the front row.